Okay, we're starting. It is Sunday, 7th of March, 2021. We are here speaking to Mr. Hiki Wong, who is the investment manager in the TMT section for Ador Capital Management Company, a very large financial institution in China. Um, we're going to do this interview in, in three sections. Um, the first section about Hike, the second section about Adar, third section about the venture capital industry in China, and then we'll finish off with Hike giving us a, a brief description of one of the cases he's been working on. So, good evening, Hike. Nice to have you on online here. Yeah. Start yeah. off. Start off by giving the audience a brief personal overview of yourself, where you're living now, where you grow up, um, and then also a brief professional overview, your, your studies and specialization. Mm -hmm. Take your time. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Hiki Wu. I'm 28 years old, and I was born in Suzhou, Changshu, which is a city of Suzhou, and uh, I've, I have studied in Singapore for four years. And uh, in Singapore, I study financial management. After that, I back to China and uh, study in XJTIU, which is Liverpool of uh, Liverpool University of XJ, uh, uh, Liverpool University. And uh, when I was in master year, I studied investment management, and uh, I learned private equity knowledge and some financial an analysis, which has related my job this moment. Yeah. Okay, let me just make a quick follow-up question on that. You've got two degrees in finance. Um, were they very relevant to the job you're doing, or did you find you had to learn a lot of new stuff in, in private equity? Uh, I mean, in industry area, I learned a lot of new knowledge and the area which I never learned in master and uh, on uh, and. Uh, and the, the the degree and uh, but for the financial part uh, like for example financial analysis and some like the 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 the, the, the banking side and knowledge i learned a lot and which is very related to my job uh, which is uh, private equity right by this time yeah. okay that that's good to hear now you you mentioned your location you're in Chongshu, which is technically part of Suzhou, the, the large city in, in Jiangsu province. So you're, you're staying there, um, but are you traveling around? Where Where is your office? And do you go into the office a lot or do you, do you travel mostly? Uh, for my job this time, right this, uh, this moment, my, my company office is in Suzhou and uh, the the mother, uh, I mean, the, the center of the uh, office is in Nanjing, and I travel a lot. Like for uh, for example, Monday I will travel to uh, maybe Nan, maybe Nanjing or Suzhou. We have a early meeting with group guy group members, and uh, for the rest of time I will stay in Changshu. But for the meeting I will take a taxi and uh, when and go to Suzhou yeah and uh, and uh, join the meeting yeah okay good now th the fourth bullet point and I'm interested because I, I think maybe things are a little bit different in China than than in Europe or in America um, is ad or capital your only activity or do you have other projects investments like you know do you w work or sit on the board of any of the companies you um, in, invest in? Do you do anything different um, than your principal role at Adar Capital? Uh, I think I I do I only do the investment in uh, Adar Capital and I take uh, like hundred percent work for the company. Yeah. Are Are you allowed to also take a working position or a board position in the companies you invest in, or is that not allowed in China? Uh, if the company will, uh, if the if my company, like for example, for if I uh, Adol Capital invest a company, and uh, we have uh, we have uh, like the we have a uh, right to have a uh, um, board board position in company, and then the in the 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 the, the, the 
the invest the the case um how to say um the 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 group member uh, maybe I join I I um, for example I I I invest a company and the case is is in charge of me and uh, if I if the adult capital have a board board position and uh, the adult capital uh, which is my company will have the right ask me to join the company board yeah okay okay have you joined any company boards so far I I, I know you only started last August so I guess it's it's fairly early days yeah it's right now uh, right now still no yeah but for the for the future I think I will have have, have the have the chance yeah so what what are the key tasks an investment manager does at Ador Capital do you specialize in one area or do you do all aspects of business development financial analysis and oversight how 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 are the tasks structured I think for for me I stay I belong to the TMT so which we which we uh, uh, the 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 working time we all, always searching some TMT companies which has technology or medium or have the uh, uh, te 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 uh which has the other T as like is like uh, the uh, tech telephone te uh, telecom telecom yeah yeah so uh, I think uh, I will focus on the TMT part. And uh, for the key task for uh, invest manager in firm, I think is judge the growth of the enterprises. I think you need to know this company will grow up in the future or in the future, uh, in the other time, in the, uh, maybe three years, five years later. Yeah. So if if you're working with a company, um, will you always be working with it? As, as a part of the team or might you be going out to see a company by yourself and doing some of the analysis by yourself when we doing the private equity we always go out go to the company like uh, uh, two people because uh, uh, my group have five people for if I have a, a connection with the, 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 the founder of the company most of the time we will put two people and uh, go to the, go to the company first time that's sensible. It's it's in any important relationship management. It's always good to have more than one person, and for a lot of different reasons. So I can understand that. Okay. Now let's let's go to the the second part of yep. our discussion, which okay. is about Ador Capital. Mm -hmm. Give a brief history of the company, when it was founded, by whom was it founded any relationship it has or had to government entities or other large corporations just just tell us a little bit about Adder Capital Management okay uh, Adder Capital yeah, started uh, two, 2008 and uh, it mixed reform in 2015 and uh, the founder of the Adder Capital yes yeah, Jiangsu Jiangsu Provincy government, uh, Jiangsu government and uh, after like born, started in 2008 the Jiangsu government uh, uh, think, think about the investment cannot in charge of the government. They were they need to some group guys focus on this in on this invest side and the government um, do the de de decision is very hard. So they put they put the mixed reform decision. So our guy uh, right now the adult capital is uh, is a total private is a total. Um, um, private company and uh, we have uh, several guys who uh, take over the management uh, man, man, management level and it has a real and right now we still have a very real close relationship relationship with Jiangsu government yeah okay and just for my information it's the the Jiangsu provincial government which which is headquartered in in the capital city of Nanjing that was that's where it started out is that correct? yeah exactly yeah and so is Nanjing still the the head offices even though I know you've got a lot of offices in China still the head office in in my company okay okay well I was I was looking at your website and and we'll, we'll be putting in one of these slides um, when we put the transcript out um, but you seem to have many 
um, regional offices. I think there's 16. Mm -hmm. um, how, how does the company work? Are these 16 offices all very independent, doing their own thing? Or are, is it a very integrated um, 16 offices where, where people are working together in lots of different offices together? They're all controlled by the head office. And for the several offices, maybe they uh, maybe maybe the adult capital hired the local guy, so they gave the local guy an office, maybe a small room, so it's their call office, so they can uh, the local guy can daytime can stay in the office and do some uh, company analysis and do some uh, report. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's, uh, it's very helpful. Yeah. How how many people in total? work for Ador Capital? 150. 250. 250. Okay. 250 persons. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, these these 60 offices, well, put the Nanjing one aside because it's the, the headquarters, um, are is, is really most of those 250 people in Nanjing and all of the other offices are just small with, with a few people? Or are there other big offices outside of Nanjing in terms of lots of people? Mm, the the head office is still Nanjing. For for uh, Nanjing, we got like how uh, like uh, nearly two hundred two hundred people in head office, and the uh, the rest of the people like fifty maybe in the several offices, so other places office. Okay, so the the large proportion of the people working for Ador are in the the head office in Nanjing. All of the other offices are are much smaller. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I think you've answered this question, but I'll, I'll just repeat it um, in that there are 16 offices listed on your website, and you've said that the ones outside of, of Nanjing are smaller, but I notice of the 16, eight of those offices are in Jiangsu province. Now, I know you said it started in Jiangsu province, but because you've got eight of 16 offices in Jiangsu, is most of your business, or at least half of it, still very much focused on Jiangsu province? Exactly. We still focus on Jiangsu province. Okay, okay. So you've, you've got offices, I notice, in, in Beijing, Shandong, Anhui, Zhejiang, Fujian, Shanghai, um, Hong Kong, and Guangdong, but um, you've got eight offices in, in Jiangsu province. Did you, um, what, what about the Hong Kong office? I mean, are, are they doing anything different? It's a different currency in Hong Kong. I, because I'm a new guy in Adult Capital, so I have uh, seldom heard about the Hong Kong office. I will go back, I will recheck the information for the Hong Kong office, yeah. Okay, but I, I think you said that mm, almost all of your activity or maybe all of it is providing financing in renminbi is that correct no, not in any other currency yes it's still rmb fund yeah okay um is is Ador capital one of the biggest companies in in china um how how would you categorize it large company medium size or or what uh, I think we are top five. I think we, Adult Capital is top five in Ch China uh, for RMB fund. We we always like have give the, the give the top five um some award yes oh award yes like top five yeah. Okay okay so a very very large firm and uh, I guess it's venture capital is a a very big business in China mm -hmm. as as we both know. Okay, good. Um, turning to the next slide that the viewers will see, where we talk about business focus. Now, this is at the company level, and I see there are four different business activities. There's venture capital and private equity. That's obviously your division. Mm -hmm. But there's also M&A, real estate, and fund of funds. Um, so do these other three areas interact with with your venture capital, or are they they all quite sort of separate business lines? It's like separate. Uh, it's, it's several part of, um, 
uh, business in my company. Maybe uh, we have like twenty people run, running running the real estate, and uh, maybe ten people just take over the fund of funds. But the most of people still focus on the VC and the PE. Yeah. Okay, I think there was a, a little bit of difficulty with the audio there. Can you still hear me, hear me okay? Yeah, John, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, it, it just we just had a little bit of flutter. Could you just repeat that last sentence because you're you're fine again now. Okay. Um the three other business is uh, divide by different group and uh, take over by different take over with uh, uh, with other group like for the real estate maybe have we our company have 20 people yes and uh, yes doing this kind of job and for the fund of funds maybe we have the 10 people yes always doing the fund of funds okay so we were we we're talking about the four different areas you're in mm -hmm. the venture capital and private equity it's it's somewhat independent from the other three sectors yeah. mm -hmm. um, yeah. Adder Capital is a big company, so it, it's got a lot of different business line. Okay. Um, so we, we've talked a little bit about the company, its offices, facilities, number of staff. Um, but let's now talk about the, the sector focus, which is the, the next slide that the viewer will we'll see on this. Now you are, or your company, I'm sorry, is involved with seven areas, clean technology, health industry, cultural industry, consumer goods and services, TMT, which is your specialization, new materials, and advanced manufacturing. So you're covering a lot of different industries. Tell us a little bit about your specialization tmt telecommunications media and technology what what sort of companies have you been dealing with so far um not just in in the industry but also in the in the size and where they're located okay we are looking we we uh, right this time i deal with some companies yes have a good uh, industry uh focus in their pro in their uh, own area and the industry and the company of the industry is growing very fast in China, and uh, it has technology. It has the products, or it, or it's, um, um, or maybe the business is very technology. Or have have its own technology, and uh, compared to the other uh, companies in China, they have their very good, uh, and the the the, the uh, good uh, have a high percent uh, high percent. Um, maybe the, uh, I mean the this, this, uh, this, um, have the high percent uh, growth in uh, more than other companies. I mean, okay. Yeah. So so you're looking for industry leaders. Um, you're very TMT focused. Um, is and you you want companies that have sort of their own unique. IP is is that also an important aspect of the selection? Yes, yes, the unique IP is very important. So um, this company will have their own. Um, when he grows their business, is very it, it have his ad advantage more um, compared to the other companies. Yeah. What? How old are these companies? Are these some of these brand new startups, or are these more mature SMEs that have already become profitable? What what sort of phase are are the companies that you're looking at? Early stage, middle stage, pre IPO? Oh, we we looking for every every stage. Like early stage, we we can we can we 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 will we will looking for we will follow follow up for the I for the some. Uh, later stage like IPO like near IPO company we we try to invest in because it's uh, almost IPO we can make a good profit in the future maybe like one year after the after our invest yeah the the companies that you work with when they are getting ready to IPO what exchange do they go to Shanghai Shenzhen or the or the the third board in Beijing. It it depends. It depends. But the third board, we we will said we will uh, give the suggestion. We, uh, don't go to the third board because the third board, 
uh, we have a very uh, we for the for the for our for me as a uh, financial investment investor investment investor uh, we have a very less profit because if you go to the third board in Beijing uh, always suggest them to go to Shenzhen or Shanghai this and the the board and the uh, in the future we have a good profit yeah. Yeah, I, I think the, the liquidity in Shanghai and Shenzhen is much higher, although I've not had a lot of dealings with the, the third board. I, I get the feeling it, it was targeted at much smaller companies that, that don't have the same growth potentials that go to Shenzhen or Shanghai. Yeah, right, right, right. So you started, I think, last August. How many companies in total? Have, have you spoken with, not necessarily provided financing, but how many have you approached? Do you, do you go through a very small number each month, or is there a very large number of firms that you're visiting? Every week we will, uh, I, I think I will book like uh, three companies I will invest. I, I will like, I will the first knock knock. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So three companies a week. Yeah. Three brand new companies. And so let's say what what is your ratio of actually going through um, and making an investment into one of these companies is it one company in every 20 that you visit one company in every 50 what what are what is the ratio of, of companies that that you find attractive versus all of those that you visit mm, ratio means sorry ratio means uh, mm. Profit? No, the, the, the number of that you will actually provide financing to. Is it one company in every 20, one company in every 50? Um, how many of these companies you visit do you actually end up providing finance to? Uh, when I'm visiting, I think I will put, I will, I, 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 when I deal with the founder of the company, I, I think it's equal. I think we, I will and talk to them like e e equally. I mean, uh, I, 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 because it's a new brand, a new company for me, I will, I, I need to learn a lot. What is your business and what is your, uh, what, how, how about your marketing and the growth of the future? I will, I will learn a lot of new knowledge. So when I deal with these companies, I, I will de equally to deal with them. How many companies since you started have you actually invested in yourself? Uh, in Adore Capital, I think I still uh, I just have one case. Yeah. Okay, okay. So therefore, you've been there six months. That's mm -hmm. about twenty six weeks. You mm -hmm. found one investment that you you liked. So that means so far, one company out of twenty five, you've you've invested mm -hmm. in so far. Yeah in, yeah, in rough numbers. Okay, yeah, I guess so. that's that's not surprising. You must have to visit an awful lot of companies before you find ones that you're satisfied to um, mm. invest in. Mm -hmm. So the the one company that you invested in so far um, was that very recent or did that happen in 2020? Uh, it's happened like two months before. Is that January or December? January of 2021. Okay. 2021, yeah. So you, you started in August, you, you've been visiting a lot of companies, and you found the first company you liked and invested in in January of this year. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about your TMT team? Um, how many people is, is that group, and, and do they do different things in the TMT sector? The people do you the same do the same job in TMT. We we just looking for, for good company to invest, and around we have like fifty guy, fifteen guy, yeah, one five. One five, okay. Mm -hmm. And therefore, are are some of them sort of older and more experienced, and others sort of more junior, doing sort of financial analysis and support? Is there a, a wide range of ages of the people in your group? The investment manager, our age, um, uh, uh, is from like twenty five to thirty five. Yeah, this age area. Yeah. Okay, so uh, a fairly young group, a fairly yeah. young group. 
Yeah, young group. Because if, we are manager, <laughs> not the CEO. <laughs> if, if it was the UK, it would be more likely 45 to 65. So oh. everyone's younger in China in the financial industry is, is what I'm discovering here. Okay. Um, let's now go to the what is the the fourth slide and talk about investment criteria now you you've already said that um you you are only making investments in remimbi no other currency um you're in the in the sujo office um but you specialize in tmt so do you potentially visit TMT companies anywhere in China or, or do you specialize just in Jiangsu province? We put like 50% time in Suzhou and we have like 20% chances to visit other companies, maybe in Shanghai, maybe in Zhejiang. So it's like this, we, we divide like this. Okay, so in, in theory, you can do business anywhere in China, but just mm -hmm. because of, of the firm and the opportunities, you're, you're spending a lot of your time in Jiangsu province and, and Suzhou in particular. Mm -hmm. What about a typical investment size? Um, sort of the, the minimum amount of renminbi and the maximum amount of renminbi. What is the, the, the general range of investment size for Ador Capital in the TMT sector? Okay, for, for Ador Capital, we invest like 5 million to 100 million. Okay, so quite a large range. And you already said before, you invest in firms at all stages, startup, revenue generation, profitable firms. So presumably the, the smaller amounts are more for startups, and as a yeah. company grows, gets bigger, and becomes profitable, mm -hmm. you're prepared to invest larger amounts, up to mm -hmm. hundred million. Mm -hmm. What what happens? Um, do you do multiple tranches for the same company? Let's say, let's hypothetically say you invested twenty five million in a company, in maybe a Series A round or something. If they needed to raise money two years later might you invest in a second tranche i know some firms only will invest once but other firms will invest multiple times what what approach do you take uh we can follow up invest so if we may for example if we are invest a company this year maybe after three years we can still it and the company going uh, prepare to go into ipo we can still invest a large amount of money into it Okay, so there, there is in some cases a, a longer term relationship working with the company and maybe providing capital to them um, several times um, before they finally IPO. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have um, a strict time limit in, in when you want to exit? I mean, do, do you say if I make an investment, I have to exit and say, seven years or or is the time to exit much more flexible uh for our fund because we have we we need to uh take care of the fund money uh, and i we, i need to give the good responsible uh, re, re, response to our lp so uh, the year of the fund i think is seven years the first three years is invest time invest year and the four years we did, we called it as yes, uh, uh, coming out year. We need to give some. We need to maybe the maybe I we need to the company. Uh, one 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 option is IPO. One option is uh, you 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 take you buy out for uh, to uh, get, get given out or maybe uh, we buy out to a um, big company and we can make profit from the 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 the, 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 the de dealing yeah. Uh, it's it's been my impression that the the seven year time horizon is is a very common um, number for Chinese venture capitals. It seems like seven years is is really the maximum for a lot of funds. Yeah, exactly. Seven years is a very normal number in EC. Yeah. 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 Whereas in in some other markets, it's um, it's ten years and and occasionally fifty fifteen, but. Um, as, as people keep reminding me, things move faster in China. 
Mm, yeah, because we all want to make money quickly. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand the feeling. I understand the feeling. Um, so that that's very interesting. You've got a close end fund, seven year time horizon to exit, and you're flexible on the exit. It could be a, a listing, an IPO. It could be an acquisition by a strategic investor, or it could be a management buyout if the firm is generating a lot of internal profit. So there's there's flexibility on that. So then that for the investment criteria, that brings me to my last question. How do how does Ador um, raise its funding? I mean, does it have a, a lot of individual investors or a small number of, of very wealthy investors? Where does the funding for Ador Capital come from? When we're doing the uh, fundraising, I think most like 50 percent is uh, rising, ri rising from the government side, I think, like 50 percent. And the rest of the 50 percent may be some uh, rich guy, rich man, and, uh, and <coughs> other financial industry maybe will give some money. And uh, for, for, um, for and this year is a very good year to do the fundraising because uh, the China have a uh, the, uh, have give, giving a uh, giving a uh, the like, I mean the guide guide guidebook. It's the the insurance money can get can the insurance money. Oh, and the insurance, yes. the big insurance company where can give their money to the fund fund com, fund company and help them to do the uh, private equity. This is a very big amount of money that um, we can rise from. Yeah. That's interesting. So there's, there's two very interesting points you've just made. The first one is that even though the Ador Capital is a private firm now, it still gets 50% of its funding from the, the provincial Jiangsu government. So there's still a government relationship. And secondly, um, the, the new regulations that allow insurance companies to greatly expand their involvement in private equity is proving to make it um, a good year for fundraising. I mean, I, I talked to some of the insurance companies and some of them were still waiting for their individual approvals to go ahead, but it sounds like the insurance industry in general is already starting to make um, uh, a lot of investments in venture capital in China. Is, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And, uh, the, uh, one, and the other, uh, good to know, yeah, other, and uh, the other, in, one, uh, and a very, uh, important information is banking side is also can give the money out out of the banking. So this year is also starting like this year and maybe next year. This year is also the Chinese government will give the regu uh, give the guidebook or maybe give a policy po policy to uh, to help the uh, in, uh, the some fund uh, some private equity company can very easily raising money from the banking side, the insurance company, and, the, and the, from the government side, yeah. Okay, now I'm, I'm fully aware of all the developments on the insurance side. So the, the, the deregulation you just mentioned on the banking side, so banks are already able to provide money for private equity, that's already started? We have cases, yeah, but, but we still need to, uh, we have cases already, yeah. Okay, okay. That's that's very interesting. That's that's following on in the path of the relationship between insurance companies and, and private equity in Europe and, and America where insurance companies because they're so much so large and have so much cash are big players in venture capital and it sounds like that trend is just starting in China now. Okay. Okay, um we, we've talked about the relationship with the government. Obviously, from a funding point, banks and insurance companies are becoming important um, funding partners for you. Does, does ADOR have any other key external strategic partners, associations with other companies, other individuals? You know, are there other big venture capital firms that you collaborate with? Are there other strategic partners for ADOR that are important? The key, uh, sorry, the key uh, working partner. You mean? Yeah. Are, is is there any other? I know you obviously have a 
a, a remaining relationship with the provincial government. Insurance companies are providing funding. But is, is there any other company or, or wealthy individual historically that is, is also actively involved with Adder, or is, is Adder so big it, it, it really operates by itself? Yeah, uh, yeah, we do have some uh, very close uh, partner, like because we before we are a government a government company, so we have some um, companies called brother companies. They all belong to belong, and uh, maybe they all uh, founded by the Jiangsu Province. So we are brother companies. We have a good relationship with other brown brother companies. Maybe they are doing the insurance. Maybe they are doing the uh, uh I mean the equity equity the second mm -hmm. market maybe they're doing the second market but maybe they are doing maybe they are doing the banking side but they all belong to the Jiangsu yeah we have a good partner part relationship with them yeah okay so for example Bank of Jiangsu Bank of Suzhou they have yeah. lots of branches do, do do you work with either of those banks we have some connection with bank but uh, if we if you uh, you mentioned that we have a good uh, uh, do do we have a good relationship? I think we have a good relationship, but, but they are they they but the relationship here yeah, like high level guys will have the good relationship. Maybe the CEO of, of the Suzhou Bank or maybe the CEO of the Jiangsu Bank. They have a good uh, personal relationship with our company boss. I mean okay. Yeah. And that there are a lot of big financial institutions in Jiangsu province. And the one other thing I just wanted to ask, it's, it's a little bit of a deviation, but, um, you know, Shanghai is right surrounded by Jiangsu province and it, it's a big financial center. So is, is Ador also quite active in, in Shanghai? We have uh, several group guys, several group guys, uh, they are local guys, they are Shanghai people. And they 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 work for our adult capital. They are searching for some. They are searching the uh, good companies in Shanghai and uh, maybe have a chance to invest. They are doing this kind of job. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Okay. So let's move on now to the the third section, which is a discussion about the venture capital industry in China. Um, so the first point was. Give us your impression, the general overview of the VC industry in China. Are government-sponsored funds a big market of the VC market in China, or are they more private in the way that Adder was, was privatized many years ago? Uh, most of the um, VC companies, they, long, long ago, they are belong to the government, and uh, they mix the reform in maybe uh, five to six years before. And uh, I think the VC industry in China is growing very fast. Uh, you looking back 20 years, we don't have VC industry in China, 20 years, yeah. maybe 2000, 2000 uh, maybe uh, 1998, we don't, have, we, don't, we don't have the VC industry and we don't know what, what kind of, and because the VC industry, or maybe we call P industry is, is founded from UK, I think I think it's USA. Yeah. I think it's US. Yeah, American. They 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 doing very good uh, private equity uh, job in their uh, in America, and then and then the, this kind of um, job, I mean this kind of industry, uh, move to uh, like to travel to China, and we learn a lot, and uh, how how to do invest, how to do the financial analysis. And uh, this year is very, growing very fast in China. I think we have the thousand, thousand in in that thousand and thousand companies doing the 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 the, 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 P, the VC industry. Yeah. Okay, I've been reading a, a lot of news headlines about the potential financial deregulation. One component being letting more foreign firms get involved in the domestic financial markets. Are you seeing any indications so far of um, foreign venture capital firms setting up or expanding in China? Is, is that happening at all? Yeah, uh, I think I mentioned last time the, the, the one, one of the uh, American fund is called uh, Sequoia. 
Sequoia, uh, Sequoia, yeah, he he. It's a very it's a very big company in China right now. They're doing a lot of invest. Uh, Sequoia, Sequoia is founded in America, and they have a Chinese partner in China and uh, raising money from the Chinese government or maybe other uh, industry, uh, other the the other uh, financial industries institutions, and uh, they do they doing the same same things like adult capital, uh, private equity invest. Our, I, I know Sequoia has been in China for a long time. They've, they've, they're probably the most well-known foreign firm in in China venture capital. But are there are there new things like I mean, do do you see the the big financial institutions like Goldman Sachs, UBS? They they've got financial licenses for China. Not exactly sure what they're doing completely. Do are they entering? Um, the, these big financial investment banks are they entering venture capital in China? Oh, they doing yeah. Golden Golden also also doing the private equity in China. I I have some cases like uh one case is in Nanjing. They are doing the coffee. They are very good. They are very popular coffee brand in China. The Golden the Golden company the Golden you you mentioned the Golden Goldman uh, Sachs yeah Golden yeah Golden yes yeah, invest this Chinese company and. Uh, we also want to invest, but we we can't compare to the golden, go, go, golden, golden. Okay, okay. So Ooh, it's yeah. really opening Ooh. up. Okay. Yeah. Um. This this is I put this in as the fourth point. It's a little bit different from venture capital, but I I want to ask you because it's it's being talked about a lot. There there has been many newspaper articles saying that China may um liberalize the capital account and perhaps allow chinese individuals to invest internationally um it's not certain it's going to happen but if it does happen um is that going to change anything at or might do might you start looking at doing international business or is, is this just too early to to respond to these headlines I think for the other companies, maybe they already invest uh, international companies. For adult capital, we I didn't see any cases we invest uh, international companies. For Alibaba, for for the for Alibaba, you know, Ma, uh, yep. Marine company, they they doing a lot of international invest in Singapore, in in UK, in or maybe Asian part, Asian like. Uh, in Indonesia, they are doing a lot of in international invest. For for the other one is B. This is this is A. And for the T, B, we have B A T B Baidu. Baidu also doing the international invest. Yeah. T is like is the the, the the one called. Mm, T is like we we check we check com other company is called T. Tencent. Tencent yeah Tencent also do international. Uh, inter international invest. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the big big financial institutions, Baidu and and Tencent, but not necessarily the venture capitals going off firm. And I guess since you you've said that so many of the big venture capitals, once upon a time were associated with a government entity. I guess that also gives them much more of a China focus and less less reason to go offshore. So that seems to make sense. OK, um, I'm coming up to the last point about the venture capital industry. And we, we started off at the very beginning, you talking about all of the studies you had in, in financial industry. So I'm, I'm going to ask this last point. What are the key skills or experience a person needs to become an investment manager in venture capital? So if you were advising a young university student today who wanted to get a job like you had, you have now in the future, what what would you encourage them to study? Um, how, how would you suggest they try to get a job in the venture capital industry? Uh, if you want to um, enter into private equity um, industry, I suggest you guys can um, give some uh, learn some learn uh, some knowledge from what what kind of uh, industry you like. I, I mean, if you like electrical, you maybe you need to learn some electrical knowledge in 
in your final year in school, in the final year of your school. I think you, it's very helpful when you enter the industry, you, you need to talk with the founder of the company, very, uh, very um, focused on the industry knowledge. And uh, you, you, meet, you need to take, make the connection with the, found, the founder, I mean, the, the company boss, the founder of the company. And uh, I, I think you also ha have the skills yeah, like human resources. You need to know several guys yeah, from the industry. You can ask them some several questions and they know the industry very well. And they are, uh, I mean, they are old guy in this industry a long time. Like they focus on the industry like 50, 20 years in this industry. It's a human resource. And you also need to have a skill yeah, the industry and analysis. And of course, if you are a financial student, you need to do the financial analysis in, in, in of uh, the to the company as well. So three sector, I mean human resource, human resources, industry analysis, and the financial analysis is the three. I think there's a very good key point, key skills you need to know when you decide to join to to I work in. Yeah, it's that's a very interesting point because um, my first 24 years in the financial markets were all not in venture capital. They were all with listed companies, government borrowers, banks, highly rated, and people would go into that industry with a pure financial background. But as as you've said, uh, and as I'm discovering in the industry, you know, if you're working with a, a healthcare company. Or if you're working with, um, you know, a a fully automated robotics plant, you you need some non-financial knowledge. You if if you go into industry 4.0, you need to have some engineering knowledge. If you go into health sector, you need to have some um, knowledge about the area you're going to focus on, whether it's pharmaceuticals or medical devices, etc. So that that's a very good point that I hadn't thought of before. Um, if you're going into venture capital, you have to know your industry and, and have some non-financial knowledge about that industry, engineering, medical or things. Um, and that, that's that's a good point to highlight. I hadn't thought about that before. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very popular in China. Some of the other companies, they required when they hire the uh, investment, in, investment manager, they required you, ha you need to have some background from maybe electrical, maybe robot, maybe yeah. uh, maybe uh, you they 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 they, they, they think the financial and uh, financial financial knowledge you can uh, you can uh, when you enter the when you get to the job you can learn right at the beginning, but the knowledge of the industry I mean the background of your industry is very helpful when you doing the. Uh, an analysis when uh, you you can judge you can judge this industry will growing this company will grow up very quickly in the future yeah. as well very helpful yeah. yeah no that's that's a very good point a very good point yeah. to highlight to any future students mm -hmm. who are looking at yeah. this industry okay so we're we've come to, we're coming up to the very last section now it's almost been 50 minutes um, and this is um, a case study so you you've made one investment now um, I appreciate maybe you you can't mention the name of the company because there's confidentiality rules, but give us just sort of a a brief two or three minute overview of you know how the process went. When did you first meet them? Um, how long did it take? What did you need to do before you made the investment? Now that you've made the investment, how do you monitor them? Just give us a little overview of of how you're managing that client. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, this case is, is I I uh, I invest in like two months before this uh, this company is doing the terminal in interface material. It's very popular in uh, it's very useful useful in uh, electrical electrical and some and some other uh, some like five uh, we call five G five G tech 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 and uh, and uh, they they also do they also offer the products to Honeywell, the very big company in yep. uh, in, 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 in in the world. I mean, and they they, they, they even it's a very startup company. They can 
offer the products to Honeywell. It's very, it's very, it's very, it's very unical in unical in China uh, in in a startup company. So when I look for, when I first get a connection connection with this company, uh, this this the, the 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 founder of the of the company, the found the founder we call uh, Mr. Lee. Okay, it, it, it's very um very familiar familiar familiarly in the the, the material the, this material industry and I think I, I when I look looking their group um, they are very uh, they are working together a very long time like five years before they work in uh, they already work in a very big international company together and they jump out the international company and they they start to have a, uh, they start ha start have to to start up their new company in in Changshu, so I think this is a very unique, very very good group to invest. So I this group okay very good, and for the industry side, I think the the te terminal interface material is yeah, very popular in China, and for this um period, I mean uh, we still our our Chinese company still use very uh, a lot a lot of international materials from other maybe from USA from UK so I think it's it's time to get a chance to to give a chance to ch uh, a Chinese company to do this kind of job I think this 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 company have the um, maybe have the chance to um, to grow up in the future so I decided to give a give a I decided to give a invest to the give an investment to them I think we I, I our group our GMT group invest like five million dollar uh, RMB and uh, mm, to this company and uh, hope hopefully they will IPO in maybe five and or maybe seven years after we invest. Yeah. When yeah. when did the company first start? How how old is this company? Two years. Two years. Oh, okay, so very, very young company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very very young. Yeah. Is it already profitable? No, they're losing the money. Okay, so they're still in what we call the revenue generation phase, trying to convert um, revenue generation into a profitable company. And but if the, it's only two years, um, you know, many people will say that really it needs at least a minimum of three years before a company can. Um, become profitable, particularly one where there's a lot of capital investments for manufacturing. So um, that, that's very interesting to see. So you invested it in January of this year. And so you've got um, another another four years to um, to exit, to make it profitable in IPO. Yeah, hopefully it's four years, but I think it's maybe five or seven, seven years exist. Okay, that's very interesting. Okay, well, that comes to the end of all of the um, recorded points I have. We're about 54 minutes, which is just about right for these things. So um, I want to thank you, Hiki, on this um, Sunday evening, because I know you've got an early meeting tomorrow in Nanjing, mm -hmm. for taking the time to um, speak with me and record. One, two, one, two, three.